All right, we're here. We're here up in the mountains. This is Joe. I'm not sure if you guys remember Joe from the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, this is Joe. Um, Joe, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, well, at the moment I'm just working on a farm out in Cheviot and found myself here going for a wee hunt for the weekend, so that should be good. What's the plan? Oh, so, we've got a little bit of a dilemma because we can either shoot up there, but there's pretty windy and pretty no I don't know if we're gonna get up there and not be able to see anything or we go back that way and go look for a deer instead of a chamois so we're just trying to figure out what we should do first yeah, we found some deer tracks but they all look a little bit old so. the deer are here and there's been another fellow walk up here in the last couple of days so we'll just have to find where the animals are now. I'm assuming they're coming down and feeding on the grass in the valley because there's quite a bit of deer sun along here and the clover's growing quite nice too. This time of year the deer really like to get, go down to the valley floor and feed on the new shoots of grass and also that clover's pretty tasty stuff. I hate wet boots, I'm trying to keep my boots dry. Joe's just charged straight on in. I reckon this is the point of no return and we're going to get wet feet. That's something to think about actually. Is it worth possibly breaking a leg or twisting an ankle just to keep your feet dry or do you just charge across the river? Or do you take your shoes and socks off? Just charge across. Yeah. So it's a good place to cross here. There's only one bit of swift water and then there's an eddy and then all the way across there's a slow bit of water in that eddy line there. Uh, even though this is a pretty easy section of water and you could probably cross anywhere, it's a good idea to just recognise these stretches so that next time you're in the mountainous environment with a flooded river, you know exactly where to cross where the current's not going to be so swift. That way you uh, avoid coming to guts or up in the hills. Quite dangerous this river crossing business. I reckon I'm going to do a bit of a series on river crossing and river safety. I've been saying that for years now. Soon. So I hate wet feet. Come across a bit of a dilemma. There's two sets of boot prints that have uh, that are coming out of this valley, fairly fresh, and the wind's also blowing straight upstream. It's a really hot day down here. It was freezing up on the divide, and down lower it's quite warm. So we don't know whether to keep pushing on up or to go up the side. It's also only mid-afternoon. We've got quite a few hours to sunset. What's the plan, Joe? Um, so we're going to shoot up the side so we can get a clear view. And maybe check if there's some animals over the side. So hopefully we see something. We were going to leave our stuff here, but I think we're going to take it with us just so we don't get separated from our equipment. I think. But it's not very far up the hill. We're going to go up there and have some lunch and then just hang out in the forest. Might give Joe a navigation lesson or something. But we reckon the animals are going to be over here because the last boot prints have gone up around the corner and there's quite a bit of deer sign just downstream so we're not going to go any further hopefully the animals are down this bottom end it's a bit of a gamble but i think we're going to take it i think we uh, made the right call to stick in this area because it looks like there's quite a few uh, animals have been living here over winter hoping to get a shot of Joe puffing but she's just holding her breath pretending she's not puffed. Jeez. Cut. This is a pretty good spot to glass out of the valley. We're just having a phone off, Samsung versus iPhone. <laughs> there you go, so Matt Toaster doesn't allow you to zoom right in, whereas this one I've got, I'm not sure what it's called, does. Yep. I don't know how to do that. Oh. <laughs> I've never done it before. 
Jo's um, Jo's got quite a lot in common with all the rest of us males in that she doesn't actually read instructions first. <laughs> we're here anyway, we're here now and this is a pretty good area to look at this other basin. It's a big country but there's a lot of green just over there so we're hoping that um, we'll be able to sit here for, you, uh, for a few hours and when it starts to get dark we'll see an animal moving and we might leg it down and then leg it back up that other ridge so we can get in a closer position to shoot because I don't have a rangefinder. I've got this uh, flash new suppressor on my gun here from a fella. If it performs, uh, they will be available for sale on my website, which is currently being built. Oh, I've just seen some animal tracks on that scree slope over there. Right in the center of the screen there, you can see some animal tracks on that slope. That was pretty classic. Joe was just making it on the backpack and I said, you can put it on the dirt, it's clean dirt. So she did and put it right on a piece of possum shit. So it turns out it's not that clean after all. Pretty awesome knife pouch here, made by Hamish Graham from HGD Designs. Or Hamish Graham Designs, HG, HGD. Or oh, HGD Designs. Hamish Graham Designs Designs. <laughs> not, not too sure how that works, but it says right there, HGD Designs. So if you want to get yourself an awesome knife, just a uh, oh, knife pouch, sorry, get a hold of Hamish and he'll custom make one for you. You send him your knife and he makes it perfectly to fit the knife, makes the pouch a perfect fit for the knife. There you go. We're going to cruise down the ridge and see if we can find uh, Oh, hello. It's a stoat trap. Let's see if we can find some more clearings down that end to have a look at because we've still got a couple of hours till dark and we'll both go stir crazy if we just sit here all day. It's the mouldy mouldy uh, possum bait station. We can't actually see the clearings now that we've walked all the way down here. So we're just going to walk all the way back up again and hang out until it gets dark. Not really how I plan the day to happen. I envision us climbing to the top of a mountainside with glorious, spectacular views, uh, and in the tussocks and Spaniard fields with chamois running around. But it's pretty cloudy over the other side of the hill. I think it's like following a herd of grandmas through the forest. Joe's put some kind of strong-smelling perfume on, and it. No shit, it's like taking my grandma hunting. She's also not very good at walking quiet yet. It's like following a heft lump through the forest. I don't know if that's going to make YouTube me being mean to Joe on camera, but a fair call, she's pretty noisy and pretty stinky. Right, we're back to square one. Waiting till it gets dark again. to get Joe some new boots. Lower. Get some lowers. You're good. Does your mum know you've stolen her boots to come hunting with? <laughs> she does. She does? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she only had jandals so she had to steal her mum's boots. They weren't even jandals, they're sandals aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Sandals. Can't go hunting in sandals. Cut it. That's some nice cutting there, Joe. <laughs> <No. laughs> you needed need to let me practice first. Let me practice cut and then video it. Yeah, just pretend like I know what I'm doing. Why can't I cut yeah, it? Yeah, today, mate. <laughs> oh, there we go. There. Go rubber cutting 101. <laughs> and just uh, teaching Joe how to light a fire in the woods. She already knows how to light a fire, I'm just teaching her how to light a real good fire by building it from the bottom up and building a good base and then lighting the fire on top of your little log cabin that you've built. 